Welcome one and all inside the Globe Television Studios. My name is Dante Stan. This is the Goshen News Weekend Wrap-Up. Thank you for joining us. As always, all stories presented during this episode of the Weekend Wrap-Up are originally reported by the Goshen News and reformatted for this video presentation. we got a great episode lined up for you with a big focus on fun in the community. But first, more details on the Elkhart County Commissioner's Office and the developing details around property being put up for auction in the area. The problem with those properties, though, they also seem to be scheduled for destruction. The commissioner's office noted this week that several properties owned by David Hezar, a notorious area landlord, are up for auction and scheduled for demolition at the same time. The county has reportedly received a list with several bids for demolition of unsafe buildings, but three of the four properties on that list are owned by David Zihar and up for auction. Bartell & Company broker Brad Hooley spoke on behalf of the Zihar in front of the commissioners and revealed that they've agreed to sell those three homes. On top of those dilapidated properties, Hooley stated that David Hezar will be selling the majority of his homes on the Elkhart County unsafe house list, a total of eight properties overall. Hooley said that a deal has been struck with code enforcement to auction off the homes to close within 30 days and have a county inspection confirm the sale, which would allow a waiver of code enforcement for 90 days past that for the renovation process to begin. County Commissioner Susie Wyrick doesn't seem sold on the idea, saying that contracts aren't generally negotiated once contractors are brought in. She was even quoted saying, we have no faith in Mr. Hezar any longer to make sure everything goes through, unquote. And noted that there's no guarantee the new deal won't just continue to delay the demolition process. Goshen College students were hard at work on Monday, volunteering to spend their time in service at Oxbow County Park for Community Engagement Day. The Globe's own general manager, Jason Samuel, led the way for underclassmen students to help make repairs around the disc golf course, which is in need of alternative holes and tee pads. The course as a whole is going through a larger scale rejuvenation, which is expected to be complete by August of 2024. Students helped install additions to the course in unoccupied areas, as some of the current course is in the path of a floodplain. Samuel was quoted saying, by cleaning it up and creating opportunities to play around the flooding, folks will be able to come in and play all year round, unquote. But the service didn't end there. Students also volunteered at the Window Food Pantry downtown, Church Community Services, and the Wellfield Botanical Gardens. Well, hey, Halloween is right around the corner. We're nearly to October now. Hope you got your costume ready because trick-or-treat times have been announced for the city of Goshen. You can grab your candy bags and head downtown Saturday, October 28th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. The festivities were approved Tuesday by the Goshen Board of Public Works and Safety. If you can't make it out on Saturday, All Hallows' Eve itself is another option as the Goshen First United Methodist Church here in Goshen will be hosting a trunk or treat from noon until 5 in the afternoon. The Goshen Chamber of Commerce Trick or Treat on Main Street will happen at the same time for folks who want to go downtown. Grab your costumes and, of course, stay spooky. <laughs> Now, uh, a long-lasting legacy is actually returned to the city of Bristol. Jerisa's Fun Zone officially opened on Wednesday in what locals know as the former Evie Pines Family Fun Center. The new owners took over on August 28th and quickly began the renovation process of the classic space. Now, some of the new additions include the redecorating of the roller rink floor, a new paint job for the 4,200-foot laser tag arena, a new sign out front, and a digital axe throwing experience. Owners say the Axe addition is the first of many new activities that will be coming to the space as they look to continue expansion with the current focus on bringing what's already in place to the 21st century. Part of those upgrades include arcade games in the lobby with car readers and a full-service snack bar. Hours for the new Fun Center are 1 to 9 p.m. Wednesday through Sunday. You can find out more information about rentals online at jerisasfunzone.com. That's going to do it for this edition of the Goshen News Weekend Wrap-Up. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you continue to make this show a part of your weekly routine as we release new episodes each Saturday. Also, be sure to check out our other Globe TV content on our YouTube channel at 91.1 The Globe and our website, globeradio.org. As always, all stories presented have been brought to you by the Goshen News. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week.